The next thing I'd like to talk about is called double insulation. This, this is another way to protect you from being electrocuted by your appliances. So appliances which are double insulated, if they only have a two-pin plug using only the live and neutral wire, I'm quite sure that some of you have appliances that use a two-pin plug only. There are two layers of plastic casing around the equipment and that is called your double insulation because the, there are two layers of plastic insulation. So basically they cover the equipment and the equipment is all in the center here. And if anything goes wrong, if the equipment breaks in the center and there are bare wires coming out, no live conductor can touch the outer casing. How come? It's because the inner casing blocks it first. And that's how you're protected in double insulation. I'm quite sure all of you have seen this thing in your house, which is called a circuit breaker. Basically, when let's say there's a lightning strike and your whole and your whole house goes dark, you will go towards this place, or your parents will go towards this circuit breaker, and you they, they will do something, they will flip a switch, and the lights in the house will come back on. So, modern buildings they will use circuit breakers instead of fuses. This thing is a little bit like a reusable fuse. So this consumer unit houses the circuit breakers and distributes the main electricity to the main sockets. The first one over here, the main switch, turns on and off the electricity supply to the whole house. The next one is the earth leakage circuit breaker. This one switches off all circuits when there's a current leakage of more than 25 milliampere through the earth wire. And the third one is a miniature circuit breaker. It breaks the circuit when there is too much current. These miniature circuit breakers, they serve the individual parts of the house. So some advantages of the circuit breakers is they switch off very quickly when the current is too large and this gives better protection to the cables. They can be sw quickly switched back on and reused. If you use a fuse instead, you need to actually buy a new fuse, put it back into the equipment before the equipment can be switched back on. For some, the maximum current above which they switch off can be changed and also they are tamper proof. However, there are some disadvantages of using circuit breakers. Firstly, they are more expensive. Secondly, they have moving parts and so the circuit breaker may actually break. It's not as simple an equipment as a fuse. The third one is that maximum current can be affected by the temperature of the surroundings. Now, fuses, switches and also circuit breakers, I guess, must always be connected along the live wires of the circuit. This is because when the switch is off or when the fuse has blown, you will need to actually change your equipment parts just like this guy trying to change a light bulb one can safely touch the exposed live wire if the switch is on the live wire because the appliance is disconnected from the high voltage the high voltage comes from here and it goes up through the live wire and comes down to the light bulb so if the switch is here the maximum that the current can flow to is this part over here the switch therefore this guy is safe however if the switch is on the wrong side, which is the neutral wire, when the switch is off or when the fuse has blown, and you can see that he his hand is now in contact with the bulb over here, the high voltage can still travel up the wire, up the live wire, go over here, and it connects to the bulb and subsequently the person who touches the bulb. So if the person is here, he can con he can complete the circuit because the person is connected to the ground. The current can flow up through the live wire, go through the light bulb, go through the person and go to the ground, frying the person to a crisp. The last thing we need to talk about is the earth wire. The earth wire is one more safety device and the earth wire is connected to the metal case of an appliance. The other end of the earth wire goes to the ground. If a fault causes the live wire, let's say it breaks here and it connects to the metal case, this will form a short circuit. You can see over here that if there is no earth wire, this live wire will connect to the exterior metal case and the current can pass through the live wire, go through the metal case, go through any person that is touching the metal case and go to the ground. Therefore, the current will actually pass through the person, electrocuting him and hurting him. However, with an earth wire, once the live wire breaks over here and the bare wire touches the metal case, the electrical energy will go through the live wire, go through the metal case and go through the earth wire and flow to the ground, dissipating harmlessly. 
if there is a fuse on the live wire, this would form a short circuit as well, overheating the fuse and breaking the fuse, preventing this equipment from having too much current passing through as well. So from this, the electrical current will go through the earth wire and not the human. Because this earth wire has much lower resistance than the human. Therefore, the human can touch the metal casing and not be electrocuted. This is an example of household electrical wiring. You can see that it's mostly parallel. 